Hello and welcome to Educo Motivation. In this video, you'll learn all about the law of vibration, one of the 12 laws of the universe and the second in our series. You'll discover why energy, frequencies and vibration underpin everything in the universe, including you, and why vibration is the greatest secret behind the law of attraction. So let's get started. The Law of Vibration, one of the 12 laws of the universe, provides stunning insights into this world, the universe, and unlocking your potential. Everyone talks about the Law of Attraction, but this is only a secondary law. The Law of Vibration is the primary law that makes attraction possible. At its core, the Law of Vibration refers to energy, frequencies, and vibration. As Albert Einstein put it, Everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. Everything in life is vibration. In fact, this statement is the basis of his most famous equation, E equals MC squared. This represents the idea that matter is nothing more than stored energy. Everything is comprised of atoms vibrating, rotating and orbiting at incomprehensible speeds. So a rock, your body, your car, water, paper, fire, everything is energy. Energy is the smallest possible constituent that we get to when we break things down. Let's consider water as an example. Its chemical composition is H2O. This means that each molecule of water is comprised of three atoms, two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Each of these individual atoms is comprised of energy moving at a high speed of vibration. In effect, at the subatomic level, electrons are spinning around the nucleus that further consists of protons, neutrons and other subatomic particles. So if we freeze the water, we slow down its frequency of vibration. This changes it into ice. Conversely, if we boil water, we accelerate its frequency of vibration. This changes it into steam. Accelerate it further, and we change the steam into air, ether, or gas. So we can transmute water into solid, liquid, or gas form based on the acceleration or deceleration of its molecules. In effect, manipulating energy is the source of all creation. Let's consider another example. Let's consider paper. One sheet of paper is 500,000 atoms thick. It's comprised of atoms of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. These atoms refer to energy that vibrates at a certain frequency to provide the physical form we call paper. If you strike a match to this paper, you accelerate the speed of its vibration. This acceleration causes the energy to change form from paper to air, ether or gas. Nothing was destroyed, merely transmuted into a different form of energy. That is why we say energy cannot be created nor destroyed, it merely changes in and out of different forms. In fact, our physical world is comprised of a wide spectrum of different energies, some perceptible to us, but most imperceptible. We know that energy moves in waves, that waves come in a range of amplitudes and frequencies, which gives them unique qualities and behaviours. We also know that energy waves travel through a medium like air, water or even awareness. The different types of vibrational waves permeating our world and this universe are spellbinding. Consider the radio waves we leverage to carry information through the air. The easiest way for you to comprehend these energy waves is to consider all the different mobile phone frequencies, TV channel frequencies and radio channel frequencies that are whizzing over your head all the time. Just because you can't physically see these energy waves does not mean they don't exist. As Dr. Carl Sagan put it, absence of evidence does not mean evidence of absence. You can of course tune into these frequencies if you have an adequate receiver. 
For example, your television would give you the ability to tune into thousands of different TV channel frequencies. Another example of radio waves would be your smartphone. Your smartphone runs on a particular frequency which is accessible through your unique phone number. Anyone anywhere in the world can tune into the frequency of your phone by dialing your unique number. But radio waves are only one type of vibrational wave. Our world is teeming with many others. Consider the microwaves we use to heat our food or pass information through Wi-Fi. Or the X-rays we use in radiography, which incidentally are the same waves emitted by stars and present throughout the universe. Consider the light waves emitted by the sun, which power our solar panels, and of course photosynthesis, which makes all life possible on Earth. Sound and heat also have different types of energy waves moving at various frequencies. Sound itself is a series of compressed waves traveling through matter, which is experienced due to the oscillating vibrations from an object, such as a loudspeaker. Temperature refers to how fast or slow the molecules of an object are moving. When a lot of energy is put into an object, its molecules spin faster and it heats up. By contrast, cooler objects simply have slower moving atoms and therefore lower vibratory rates. Your own body is teeming with vibrational waves of energy and consciousness, from the cycles of your breath to your heartbeat and on to your electrical brain waves. If you could magnify any part of your own body down to the cellular level, you would be able to see cells dividing into new cells. These cells are made of atoms, and these atoms are comprised of energy that is forever moving at a high speed of vibration. So considering all of these vibrational waves, it's fair to say that we live in an ocean of motion. Everything in the universe is alive with energy. Even your thoughts are vibrations that you put out into the universe. When you concentrate, you amplify the strength of these vibrations. This is why Emerson said, Energy flows where attention goes. Such taut vibrations are potent cosmic waves that penetrate all time and space. This is precisely why you must always be aware of the thoughts you think. These thoughts control the vibrations of your physical body and determine its state of being. This ease itself is nothing more than a body that is not at ease, and negative thoughts are one of the primary factors. Of course, your personal vibration is also influenced by other vibrations in the world and other people. Your body resonates like a tuning fork, so your vibration can attune to someone else's. You already instinctively know this. You know that some people are uppers. They have a can-do attitude. They see the good in everything and everyone, and just talking to them lifts your vibration. You feel energized by them. Other people are downers, they see the negative side of everything and everyone. Being with them drops your vibration and leaves you physically drained. This is why you need to be constantly aware of your vibration and the vibration of others. Try to surround yourself with high vibratory people as much as possible and always try to avoid those with low vibrations. Always remember that you too are always making other people feel something. Your ability to be intentional and to make people feel certain things is critical to creating the life you dream about. So always try to give off positive vibes. Interestingly, your vibration does not just affect other human beings, but everything else as well. Let's consider plant life. It has been scientifically proven that plants can pick up and respond to your vibration in the most astounding ways. In effect, a plant is so effective at picking up your vibration that it can literally read your mind. Sounds ridiculous, I know, but hear me out. Cleve Baxter is a polygraph specialist with the CIA where he instituted their polygraph program. One evening, as he was sitting in his laboratory, a large-leafed tropical plant called a drachina caught his eye. Out of pure curiosity, he decided to attach electrodes to the leaves of this plant. Baxter was wondering if he could measure the osmosis level after watering the plant. So he hooked up the polygraph machine to the plant and waited. 
For some unknown reason, the readout produced by the stylus on the graph paper moved in the direction opposite to what he had expected. Puzzled, he wondered why. Having pondered over the reasons, he thought to himself, what would happen if I got a match and burnt the leaf? At that instant, there was a sharp, sudden convulsion of the recording pen. Now he did nothing other than think about burning the leaf. In this regard, the only logical explanation was that the plant picked up his vibration. Plants, of course, are made of cells which are structurally and functionally very similar to our own cells. Some plants, like humans, seem to be more perceptive than others. You see, our thoughts and emotions are registered in every one of our cells, whether it is our heart, liver, kidney, or elsewhere. It was obvious the plants were picking up on the thought vibrations of human subjects. He conducted hundreds of different studies with different species of plants, and they all confirmed this fact. Plants have a level of conscious awareness that defies all expectations. Perhaps his most infamous study involved placing two large plants adjacent to each other in a room. Six of his research assistants drew lots. One of them received instructions to effectively rip one of the plants to pieces in front of the other plant. The five other students left the room and the remaining student ripped the plant out of its pot and tore the leaves to shreds. Baxter re-entered the room, attached his polygraph galvanometer to the unskated plant and then asked his assistants to enter the room one at a time. There was no response on the graph paper until the perpetrator entered the room. At that moment, the recording needle went into convulsive oscillations on the graph paper and the plant seemed to recognize the guilty party. What did it recognize though? It certainly wasn't their hair color, clothing, facial features or even the guilty party's expectations of being caught. Again, it is probably what Baxter calls primary perception. In all likelihood, the plant accessed information from the implicit order. This refers to the energy sea of consciousness that we are all baited in, and thereby connected to each other, and in some mysterious way, to every living thing in our world, whether it be plant, animal, or human. This is perhaps the greatest proof we have that our thought waves vibrate at a frequency that penetrates all time and space, and such vibrations have an effect on everything else. This also provides a metaphysical explanation for how certain people get a bad feeling when something has happened to someone they love. They just get a hunch that something terrible has happened. Then they make a call and their suspicions are confirmed. This is supported by quantum theory which suggests that subatomic particles can send and receive data irrespective of separation in time and space. Scientifically, this is called quantum entanglement or a spooky action at a distance, and many scientists now believe that this quantum communication is faster than the speed of light. Now you already know that you have five senses. You can see, hear, smell, taste and touch. But did you know that your sixth sense is vibration? You can pick up on the vibration that other people are in. This intuitive factor gives you insights into the thoughts that are pervading that person's mind. That is why you often get a gut feeling when something is not right or out of place. You are picking up on a negative vibration. It is also how you are able to sense that you are being watched. You just get a feeling that eyes are trained on you and then sure enough you turn around and you catch someone in the act. How does this happen? It happens because this person is looking at you, which effectively means they are thinking about you. Thought is a form of energy moving at a certain rate of vibration. In effect, you tuned into their frequency because their thought impulse was being focused directly at you. This is also demonstrated when you start singing a song seconds before it comes on the radio. In effect, you tuned into the frequency along which the energy of that particular vibration was flowing. It is also demonstrated when you have been thinking about someone you haven't seen nor heard from in a while and out of the blue they give you a call. In effect, they picked up on your thought vibration, it activated cells of recognition in their brain and they got the urge to give you a call. No doubt you wrote these circumstances off as coincidence, but in truth there are no such things. 
Your mind is a finely tuned instrument that has the ability to pick up and decipher energy moving at various speeds of vibration. So now that you understand energy frequencies and vibration, how do you leverage these concepts to bring about the things you want? Well, to do that, you need to understand the dynamic interplay of decision, imagination, belief, feelings and action. So let's examine these one by one now. So why is decision so important to vibration? Well, to switch to a much higher frequency, you need to make a committed decision to do so. You have to go after what you really want. This can be challenging because your paradigm is trying to keep you trapped in your comfort zone. And yet all the great dreams you wish to realize live in your discomfort zone. In effect, you must be willing to feel uncomfortable if you're going to achieve great things. In this context, you need to realize that making a committed decision is the only way to change frequencies. A committed decision is a transfer of energy to a new state. But this decision must be both definite and immediate. You can't decide you'll make your move when your circumstances change. You can't wait to get your ducks in a row. You need to say, I'm doing this now. You see, there is a difference between being interested in creating the life you want and being committed. When you are interested, you do what's convenient. When you are committed, you do whatever it takes. You accept only results, not excuses. So you need to make a committed decision to switch frequencies now. When you immediately start to pursue the things you want and resist any temptation to procrastinate, then you're already on the frequency of the good that you desire. You have shifted the tectonic plates of your thinking and providence shifts too. Stated differently, the person that knows they are going to the gym tomorrow is on a much higher frequency than the person who thinks they might go. If you know you are going, you are fully committed, you have a definite decision made, you will absolutely follow through, you will be at that gym tomorrow. Conversely, if you think you might go, you are not committed. You've put off making a definite decision and it's highly unlikely you'll follow through. So get on the vibration of knowing and you'll see magic happen. Next, why is imagination so important to vibration? Well, lofty goals have psychic coordinates. They have a place in your imagination and your imagination is the workshop of your mind. Albert Einstein spent his days in this workshop and brought his greatest success forth from this formless substance. He said, Imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. It makes sense really, if you keep holding the image of a goal on the screen of your mind, you're on the frequency of that decision and your mind will do whatever it takes to get there. Einstein also said, Imagination is more important than knowledge. For knowledge is limited to all we now know and understand, while imagination embraces the entire world and all there ever will be to know and understand. So you will have lofty goals, but you likely won't have the necessary knowledge as to how you are going to achieve them. Einstein tells us you don't need to know the how, you just need to know what you want and why you want it. The how will reveal itself to you as you move towards the image held in mind. Steve Jobs had the same philosophy. He once said, You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down and it has made all the difference in my life. So imagination is the spark that sets up the vibration you need to be on. Keep moving towards the image held in mind and you will get there, even if you don't know how. Next, why is belief so important to vibration? Well, I think Emerson put it best when he said, Believe and your belief will help create the fact. Belief keeps you on the vibration of manifestation. It shifts you from a vibration of wishing and hoping to a vibration of knowing. It tunes you into the psychic coordinates of the thing you want. You know it's there and you know it's coming here. You move towards it and it moves towards you. The problem is that most people do the opposite. 
Any time an image of their dream car flashes on the screen of their mind, they think they'll never be able to afford it. And so instead of moving towards the goal, they push the goal away. All the books on psychology, psychiatry and behavioural science say the same thing. If you don't believe it, then it isn't going to happen. As Napoleon Hill put it, anything the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Even Jesus said it in the Bible when he proclaimed, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. But how do you believe something? Well, our belief system is formed by our evaluation of something. If we reevaluate a situation, then our belief about that situation will change. The key here is this. You have to change your belief system about who you are and what you are capable of doing. You change it by continuously re-evaluating who you are. Don't think that you are your past results. Your past results are not your future. So never put a crown on circumstance. You've already paid the price for your past decisions, so you don't need to keep suffering because of them. You need to realize that you can never escape from a prison if you don't know you're in one. Many of us are imprisoned by vibrations that are in harmony with our circumstances. Your brain is a vibratory switching station that lets you alter the vibration you are in in an instant. The second you do, you are going to start attracting whatever is on the frequency you have moved onto. Now really think about this. You must control the vibration you are in if you want to control what's coming into your life. There is no other way to manifest the things you want. Next, why are feelings so important to vibration? Let's explore that now. So your conscious mind gives you the power to originate an idea. You get to choose your thoughts. You match the frequency of the thing you want by holding an image of that thing in mind. These thoughts generate feelings within your subconscious mind. Thoughts mixed with feeling determine your frequency of vibration. Your conscious awareness of this vibration is referred to as feelings. If you become consciously aware that you are in a negative vibration, then you will feel bad. You can change how you feel by changing what you're thinking about. It's impossible to feel bad when you focus your mind on a pleasant thought. This awareness gives you the power to change your level of vibration, which in effect changes your feeling, which changes your action, which changes your life. So feelings are the key to activating the subconscious mind. You originate an idea consciously, and you hold on to the image of that idea in your mind in order to impress it upon the subconscious mind. But it's only when you get emotionally involved with the idea that your subconscious mind accepts it. Ultimately, your level of vibration is directly controlled by your thoughts. The way you feel is directly attributed to the thoughts you are thinking. Positive thoughts create positive feelings which manifest results resonating on that upper frequency. Negative thoughts create negative feelings which manifest results resonating on that lower frequency. This is critically important. So if you harbour negative emotions such as fear, anger, hatred, jealousy, doubt, worry, sadness or vengefulness, then you are putting negative vibrations out to the universe. This resonates with comparable vibrations in your external world and attracts back similar magnitudes of energy. To create the life you want, you must commit to keeping your vibration as positive as feasible and as high as possible. And yes, of course there are times in life that you will feel deflated. Your situation might be very difficult right now, but you need to push this to the edge of your awareness. Yes, the negative situation is there, you are aware of it, but you are not focused on it. Energy flows where attention goes, and you're giving all your energy to the mental image you are moving towards. As James Allen put it, your circumstances may be uncongenial, but they shall not long remain so if you but perceive an ideal and strive to achieve it. If you are feeling bad, then you need to replace the thoughts generating those feelings and focus on something more positive. You can do this in an instant for the simple reason that your mind thinks in pictures. 
Your brain cells are the files within which you store these mental pictures. Negative vibration means that you are accessing brain cells that store negative imagery. You can switch to a positive vibration by focusing on positive imagery. Think about things that make you happy. Do things that make you happy. Listen to music that makes you happy. Go for a walk in the woods or a stroll on the beach. Walking in nature is proven to trigger higher frequency vibration. So everything you can do to boost your sense of well-being and happiness will help here. Get a gratitude journal, record all the things in your life that make you happy, and read it every day. Get a daily wins journal, write down all your little daily wins, and read it every day. Script positive affirmations and statements of self-talk. List out all the things you want to be, do, and have in the present tense as if you already have them. Record these statements into a dictation app on your smartphone in an energetic, upbeat voice. Make them sound like statements of fact. Listen to these recordings immediately on waking each morning and right before you fall asleep each night. Nothing is more powerful at fine-tuning your vibration. These three exercises alone will make you feel great and set you up for success. But don't stop there. You can manipulate your own brain waves and tune into preferential frequencies through meditation and by taking advantage of the hypnagogic state. The hypnagogic state of consciousness refers to the state you experience as you transition from wakefulness into sleep. This threshold state of consciousness is often associated with hallucinations, lucid thought and lucid dreams. It has been widely accepted that this is the best time to communicate directly with your subconscious mind and therefore infinite intelligence. In the hypnagogic state, your brain is producing theta waves. Theta waves have a frequency of 3.5 to 7.5 Hz and are considered slow activity. It is connected with creativity, intuition, daydreaming, emotions and memory. Brilliant inventors like Thomas Edison purposefully took advantage of this frequency to attract solutions to challenges he was having. Edison routinely napped with a steel ball in each hand. He often preferred to do this upright in a chair with metal plates positioned directly under each hand. He would then allow himself to drift off to sleep with the problem he saw the solution to firmly fixed on the screen of his mind. When he fell asleep, the steel balls would eventually fall from his hands onto the metal plates and he'd awaken with a flash of inspiration and insight. He always slept with a pen and paper beside him so that he could immediately record these insights on waking. He credited this technique for discovering many of his great inventions. It's yet another powerful demonstration of frequencies and the power of vibration. Meditation is also a powerful practice when it comes to putting yourself into a receptive state of vibration. It serves to calm the conscious mind and allow insight and intuition to bubble up from the depths of your subconscious and superconscious minds. This knowledge is acquired through non-physical or psychic mechanisms that transcends ordinary consciousness. In fact, such knowledge can originate from the past, the future, the physically remote present or from sources undetectable from the physical senses. These states of vibration are often associated with precognition and remote viewing episodes. Next, let's look at action. You can move from one frequency to another effortlessly by simply changing what you're focusing on. As you operate your brain cells, you switch your thinking and you can move into a different vibration. When you change how you think habitually, you are moving yourself onto different frequencies. The higher the frequency, the more power you have. You can only attract what you are in harmony with. That's all your radio is going to play, whatever frequency you are on. So if your thoughts are stuck on the frequency of your circumstances, you can only attract more of the same circumstances. But if you live on the frequency of where you are going, if your focus is on the things you want, then you are literally magnetizing the results you seek. Your mind is the instrument that determines your frequency of vibration. And it's important to note that your mind is not your brain. Your brain is part of your body, but your mind is an activity. 
Your mind is comprised of your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind can originate a thought, and a thought is nothing but an impulse of energy. Remember, energy functions on frequencies, and a frequency is a level of vibration. Now there is an infinite number of frequencies, but by thinking you can tune into a specific frequency. So by creating a vivid image of the thing you want in your imagination, you're immediately on that frequency. So by matching the frequency of the reality you want, you will create that reality. The big problem is that most people have never decided what they want. They see something they want like a car, then immediately they start thinking of all the reasons why they can't have it. So they are using their imagination to get what they want, and then they start negating it. They are using their creative faculties against themselves. They do that because they are ignorant. They don't know any better. They don't know, and they don't know they don't know. Now, people don't deliberately destroy themselves. They do it because they don't understand. They simply lack awareness. It's like walking off a skyscraper and not knowing what gravity is. Ignorance is not an excuse. You either work with the law or you work against the law. The wonderful thing is that you can tap into universal energy if you want to create something and you can literally create anything you want. But if you don't act on the idea, then nothing will happen. Wallace D. Wattles put this very well when he said, By thought, the thing you want is brought to you. By action, you receive it. But why wouldn't you act on the idea? Well, let's examine that. Your subconscious mind is totally deductive. It doesn't care what you plant, but it will execute what you plant. It accepts it. It has no ability to reject it. As Andrew Carnegie told Napoleon Hill, any idea that is held in mind, that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered, will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. So you reap what you sow. Whatever you plant in your subconscious mind will sprout in your life. So how else can you apply the law of vibration to your life? Well, you can make someone more receptive to the actions you wish them to take by tuning into their frequency. You do this by paying careful attention to the words they are using. Words are nothing more than thought energy waves transmuted into sound energy waves. Your eardrum is the receiving station and your brain can thus decipher how that other person is feeling. In effect, through active listening, you can tap into the frequency of thought originating in the mind of another person. This reveals itself in the words they use, their tone of voice, and their body language. Considering these attributes, you instinctively know whether they are in a good or a bad vibration. When you get a feel for their frequency, adapt what you are saying to induce a state of higher vibration in that person. You do that by giving them the ability to experience positive expectancy. We already know that mind and spirit are always for expansion. Anything you can do that will give that person a sense of positive expectancy will raise their level of vibration. You could, for example, give them a sincere compliment or give them the ability to improve any aspect of their lives. Sending them positive energy in the form of sincere compliments or advice will lift their spirits. Interestingly, lifting one's spirits is nothing more than raising the level of vibration. Always remember no matter what circumstance you face in life, there is always a gap between your recognition of the circumstance and how you respond to that circumstance. You need to realize the existence of this gap and use it to respond rather than to react. As the law of polarity suggests, there is some good in every bad. By focusing on this good, you vibrate at a higher frequency, which in turn will attract what you need to get you through the circumstance. However, if you react negatively, you are vibrating on lower frequencies, which will continue to attract negative thoughts that self-perpetuate even more negative results. The highest possible frequencies you can emit are those of love, gratitude and positive expectancy. So give love to everyone. It costs you nothing to give everyone a friendly smile. Be friendly, warm and sincere. 
engage people in conversation, and do your best to brighten up their day. Treat everyone you meet as the most important person in the world, and when they speak, give them your undivided attention. Continuously give thanks for all the things in your life that you are grateful for. It might be your parents, your spouse, your kids, the sunrise, or even the aroma of fresh coffee. No matter how bad your current circumstances are, focus on the good that's about to reveal itself as it sails over the horizon and into your life. When you practice these things, you start vibrating on the highest possible frequencies. When you do that, you will attract a life of purpose, health, wealth and happiness. You will find joy in every moment and it will pervade the full spectrum of life activities. This is not hokey. This is not fantasy. This is all down to quantum physics. Let me elaborate a little further. Vibration refers to what's happening to atoms and molecules at the subatomic level. In effect, they are oscillating, shaking and rotating at a certain frequency which determines their outward physical manifestation. Now, quantum science tells us that the universe is filled with particles that interact with each other and flow with quantum energy. Furthermore, quantum physics teaches that everything can be broken down into infinitesimal particles and waves, creating unseen energy that drives the universe. Scientists record that although these quantum-sized particles can't be seen, they have a major influence on humanity. Now, quantum mechanics reveals that tiny particles of matter are also waves of energy, and that both matter and energy can act as either a particle or a wave. In other words, the two states actually do become each other. What this means is that you are not separate from the world you observe and define as outside you. Your perception determines the shape of your reality. Furthermore, quantum entities exist in multiple possible realities called superpositions. This means that any given moment contains unlimited futures that can all become real. The reality that occurs is the one that you pay attention to. Your present thoughts are literally creating your future experiences. And get this, one of the basic tenets of quantum physics is that you are creating an answer to a question by making a decision. Let me repeat that. One of the basic tenets of quantum physics is that you are creating an answer to a question by making a decision. So if you know you're going to the gym tomorrow, you've made a committed decision that you'll be there. So you've answered yes to the question, will I be at the gym tomorrow? These answers create decisions and outcomes. In effect, your thought waves are energy that penetrates all time and space to create the future you are about to live. You truly are the architect of your own destiny. By now I hope you realize that the law of vibration underpins the law of attraction. In effect, both work synergistically to attract into your life whatever is resonating at your level of vibration. So please choose your thoughts carefully. You have no idea how powerful they are in creating your life. Be sure to click the next video on your screen right now. This features the next law in our series, The Law of Correspondence. It reveals why success is an inside job. Keep up to date with our latest videos by hitting subscribe and turning on notifications. Please show your support by clicking like.